Okay, let's have a little conversation about the Passion of the Christ. Uh, you may have heard of it. Movie came out uh, at this point years and years and years ago, but it was a really big deal when it came out. It was a lot of people I know. You know, it was funny because I was working at Radio Shack in Malibu at the time, and uh, I remember being in a company meeting. And for some bizarre reason, the woman who was leading the meeting asked us all to name our favorite movie. Uh, yeah, I, don't, I didn't really understand at the time either. She asked us to name our favorite movies. So they went around the room. I named The Godfather and Casablanca. Thank you very much. Those are two first-rate choices. Thank you very much. Uh, and like half the room named The Passion of the Christ. And my favorite movie is The Passion of Jesus Christ. Now, here's an interesting thing about the movie. It really wasn't that good. It really wasn't. I mean, if you're a Christian, I don't want to burst your bubble. I don't want to be blasphemous here. But no, it really wasn't that great of a movie. Um, a lot of people were really, really passionately convinced that it was a fantastic movie. Why? Well, because in terms of high-quality Christian content, entertainment content, you know, it had some of the trappings of a real movie. Some things about it were really first-rate and high-quality. The acting, for example, Jim Caviezel is a great actor. Very, very, very first-rate performance in, in, the, in the movie. That in and of itself is usually, you know, you go see Christian movies. I don't even bother to see most of them. Again, I don't want to be blasphemous if you're a Christian listening to this. You know, I'm on your squad, trust me, but, you know, just just can't, can't do it, man. I can't bring myself to sit through the movies. Honestly, I can't. God's not dead. God's not dead, too. Yeah, couldn't be bothered. You know, I'm supposedly, my wife will check them out. But actually, no, my wife is full of garbage because she'll pretend like she'll pretend she wants to see him really badly. But then when it's time to go, you know, she we never seem to wind up going to them together. So she didn't want to see him either. Why? Because they're usually lousy. And the reason why the passion of the Christ struck such a deep chord with so many people is there were some characteristics about it that weren't lousy. The sets, spectacular. Matter of fact, it looked and felt like an art house, like a first rate art house film. I mean, it was really, in terms of cinematography, absolutely off the charts. Um, they had the one touch where they had people speaking in Aramaic. Fantastic touch. And it really added to the whole... It really added to the movie itself. Um, a couple other attributes about it were first rate. But overall, it really just wasn't very good. I mean, it wasn't very satisfying. It was, some people call it torture porn. And I don't necessarily completely, utterly disagree with that assessment. That <laughs> it was kind of like, um, and it's really too bad because it was really, really, really off the charts successful, like I say. Now, the more importantly too bad aspect of the whole sordid tale is what happened in Mel Gibson's life after the movie came out. Um, this to me was actually kind of personal because I, I didn't know him per se, but I met him a couple times here in Malibu and I knew his wife pretty well, not, not very well, but she came into the store a couple times. I'd help her out. Um, and we would have conversations, me and my wife, and there was conversations at our church about how inspiring it was that here was this really, really successful Hollywood couple and he had something like eight kids. I knew a couple of kids. They're local yokels. Uh, worked with one of them. He's actually a really good kid. Uh, really, really nice. Um, he uh, he worked at that. That was the type of situation that we used to think was really, really positive. Here was a, a like a a list uh, a list Hollywood star who had a really solid marriage, as far as we could tell. And, you know, he was doing, he was making his kids go work at a deli. At that time, I worked at a, a deli right down the road. And he worked there with me. His dad made him get a summer job. Yeah, it was, it was really obviously Mel Gibson's son, too. He looked exactly like him. Really nice kid. Uh, I won't say his name just because, you know, I don't, if, I doubt he'll ever hear this video, but, you know, I uh, just won't. Um, but I liked the kid a lot. Now, so it was really sad how that, how that whole thing went down, the trajectory. Um, if in you're a Christian, you can see in there evidences of really clear spiritual warfare. Um, if you're not, you know, maybe you don't necessarily feel all that bad for Mel Gibson because he kind of... I mean, I analyze it as he was in a situation with his wife and... 
you know, the love of his life. He he had been he had been married to her for going back years to before he was famous, and he kind of ruined that. It was mostly his fault, from what I understand. And then his life just took an alcoholic tailspin, fell apart, and he just plummeted. And you know, the next thing you know, you were seeing things of him on TV. Uh, you were seeing clips of him on some with some girlfriend saying the crazy, the craziest, crazy stuff you ever heard on a freaking. You know, sending her messages of like sounding like an absolute lunatic, like his life had totally fallen apart, and and uh, you know, his life had totally fallen apart, and now he was a stark, raving, mad, crazy man, and it was it was actually kind of sad to see. So, where am I going with this? The perils of success. Success, in fact, is a lot more dangerous than failure. Failure is easy. Failure is easy. You can catch a groove with failure and be a failure for 10, 15 years of your life without any, any, any further complications. Failure is a simple thing to do. Success, on the level that Mel Gibson had, is often sometimes, you know, very, very perilous, especially if you are not prepared to, to stand there. I mean, on some levels, he was being called upon because, by virtue of the fact that this was one of the leading Christian films of all time. I, I believe that this was the best-selling Christian movie of all time. And therefore, he was being called on somewhat, by virtue of this fact, to be somewhat of a voice for the Christian community and somewhat of a, you know, a quasi-religious figure. And he just wasn't prepared to handle that kind of pressure. Um, that had a lot to do with it. Now, that's not the entirety of what went down. But that is certainly one aspect of it. Success on that level is something you need to be thoroughly prepared for because it is more dangerous than failure. It is oftentimes it is something that a person strives for their whole life and when they get it, it's, it is an enemy to them. Uh, that's all on the subject for now. I'm going to go more into this in further audios. Just getting the ball started, just getting the ball rolling.